Okay, let's do it. Let's start with transcendent moments in your life. I love transcendent moments because they can be good, they can be good or bad, and my opinion is that moments in our life are all neutral regardless. If it's bad, then it's it's a place of, of learning and growing. It's it's an ex experience that, that you can, that can empower you or you can become victim to it. So mm -hmm. either a quote unquote bad experience or a quote unquote um, amazing experience where you felt like you arrived. And it's like a real time expan expansive experience, like yes. something that is um, I mean, the first thing that popped to mind was actually um, when I had like completely felt like I hit a wall physically, mentally, and emotionally, spiritually, every plane that I could tap into, I felt like I had completely hit a wall. I think this was in 2015, like actually hit a wall, like a like I was like dying. I had been working so hard. Um, not, I'm not trying to be, a, I wasn't like feeling like a victim. It's just like at all. It's just like when you go into those rabbit holes of creative immersion, um, financial difficulty, uh, being a nomad, um, partying too much for those circum it was like a work hard play hard period of years to the grind in new york and like festival to festival and like everything was magical and beautiful but like eventually after this one event at the savannah film festival in 2015 after a week of these parties and speaking on panels and it was like literally i felt my whole being just like deflate I thought I was going to crawl into a hole and never, ever, ever come out because I was just exhausted. And I decided to go onto Google and like put in 12 words in the Google search box that just were like coming up for me and not to ask anyone advice or guidance or anything. And these words led me to a place called Pachamama in costa rica which is basically a kind of like a commune almost i don't i won't get into too much of what that is but i went for a week of like the super deep uh body cleanse which ended up also cleansing the mental and the emotional uh and i was like reborn like literally reborn and from that experience my diet changed my lifestyle changed my pacing of my the way i worked changed um it was like really important. It became a very clear message that these pauses, so to speak, I didn't plan to talk about that, but that's like kind of where we are right now as a collective, um, are really important to growth, really important to expansion, really important to um, our organs, our mind, our spirit, our everything. And so that was one week. And I had an incredibly profound experience that had a big impact on me. Um, hopefully that was a good answer to your question. Yeah, did you do cacao there the first time? <laughs> was that my first cacao experience? Yeah. Um, no, 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 okay. no. I love cacao that you bring that into your, your events. Yeah, I mean, cacao is a plant medicine um, at, when it's ceremonial grade uh, and comes from Mayan culture, um, pre-coffee, uh, very much a ritual, very much about um, setting intention and heart opening and, you know, sharing dreams and on the on the physiological it also promotes circulation and, and energetic flow um so it's got a lot of healing properties as much as it does uh have the ability to help with manifestation and so yeah it's been really fun to bring those into um film stuff art stuff yeah. you know it's nice because you get a very high vibration from the cacao Mm -hmm. So it's nice to kind of set the tone that way and then go in to watch a film rather than alcohol, which like is also totally fine. Um, but different. Yeah. It, it tweaks the vibe in a different way. So yeah. yeah, I've been playing, playing around with different, different stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, that's beautiful. And, and you're a big takeaway with that was allowing, having an awareness. And I love what you said about not um, reaching out for advice. Like you were listening to spirit, you were listening to uh, your intuition and outside of Google, <laughs> you didn't reach out for advice. And I, I love that because so often we uh, are seeking for other people to give us an answer that we know of we know, right? We know intuitively mm -hmm. what the answer is. And we just want someone to, 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 you know, that's why I love to listen because that person is intuitively going to get to their own answer ultimately mm -hmm. and, or ask evoking questions. Um, and sometimes people just need to hear, to be heard, you know, to, to talk and be heard. And so uh, you listen to that internal guidance saying, I don't want advice. I know what the truth is. I just get to look inside and, and discover it. Um, and I think that that's really important um, because so often in our narratives and filmmaking and our careers, we look for advice. We look for someone to, you know, coach is one thing and a mentor is one thing. You certainly have those in your life. Um, but we look outside in the entertainment industry to give us something. Mm -hmm. as opposed to knowing intuitively what we have to offer and giving mm -hmm. that. And this is so relevant. Yeah. Yo. Um, my two producing partners are actually on this chat. Like, and we've been talking a lot about humanizing the icon and how we, we look to this sort of these iconic figures, whether religious or Hollywood, um, to sort of give us our crutch and our leadership. So there's a balance. There's there's a balance, but to understand there's the icon within, you know, too. So it's uh that's a different Absolutely. subject, but like that was so right on like what we've been talking about with my team on the side. So Yeah, I love yes, and the thing that we love about gods and how we celebrate icons is they the, they chills. they are they are, mm -hmm. we're a mirror of them. They are a mirror of us. I mean, look, if you look at all the Greek gods, they're just, they're, they're, they're superhuman, right? They, they all have human, they have jealousy, they have all of these things. And the Old Testament God is, has all those human qualities too, right? God, we are created in God's image. Mm -hmm. Basically, these icons that we celebrate or put up on the pedestal, they're just a mirror image of our best selves in many ways, or our most lighted self and mm -hmm. what we aspire to be and if we understand that internally we have that it's just a mirror of us mm -hmm. right and so um you know when we're when we're those people that we celebrate are literally um just mirrors of of ourselves the reason why we admire them is because they are uh, parts of them are a great part of us and um you know, when people, and, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I just got excited. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Um, and the icon is perhaps not the person. That's an image, too. That's a projection, too. So we have the icon up on the pedestal, but the, the human behind the icon is actually just figuring it out, too. It is going mm -hmm. through their own turmoil, inner and outer. And it's... Um, it's a little dangerous a bit sometimes to idolize, you know? And I'm yeah. noticing a lot of people that are seen as icons today expressing in different ways their desire to be taken off the pedestal, mm -hmm. you know? Like Jim Carrey is a perfect example and talking about Jim Carrey is not real. That's the role he's been playing his whole life. And mm -hmm. we're all playing roles in our kind of constructed personality that sort of happens you know, through conditioning, um, forming identity. I mean, that's like, again, a topic that I'm just so fascinated with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Martine says God is inside us and yeah, yeah, that is truth. That is love. That is, that is all inside of us. And all, you know, everything. I don't want to get on a, a big religious <laughs> no, no, thing. Spirit, However, spiritual, spiritual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, but I do want to address you know, just, just quickly that my perspective of religion and, 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 and 
the form it quite often takes in kind of the bastardized form or whatever, is that we're looking outside of ourselves for an answer. We're looking outside ourselves for a leader. We're looking outside so that we don't have to be responsible. Right. And, and when we look for God inside of ourselves, then not only will we find the truth, we find the answer. We also find our creativity because God created us so, so we could create. Um, but what people look toward religion to do is give a justification or an answer for something that they don't want to be responsible for. Right. How can I be responsible for coronavirus? How can I be responsible for you know, these bad things that happen in my life. And until we are, we, we see how we are source, I'm going to go, I'm not going to go off in that direction, but. Um, are you best. sure? I think I you're know. being pulled there. I know. I know. But what, okay. it, what, like, do you want to go down that rabbit hole? Or do you let's, want to? Let's just address it quickly. Yeah, because okay. it's coming up. Um, and so when we, we, and this is tough because this responsibility um, holds us accountable and when we acknowledge that we are source for any event, then we get to look at ourselves and say, how am I responsible for that? And this is really tough, especially, you know, if you're, if you're not used to doing it. I mean, I love it because I have more control when I go, I'm responsible because, um, you know, I'm responsible for um, uh, w w w war. I'm responsible for war because I don't give a generosity, right? I'm responsible for war because in my past I have 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 held anger inside of me or resentment inside of me or or felt like I needed to have ownership around something. So you're talking like what I would call is like your vibration. Because if you're operating at like a lower frequency, which yeah. is what they're even talking about in science now, then you're actually contributing negatively to the collective yeah so it's not like a direct people look for those direct links like how would you be responsible for war but it's it's just taking ownership in the part in which we co-create you know all of our realities and what are we doing to raise the collective to where we can see that like oh we are part of a whole ecosystem we are part of a whole unified field and if we all operate from fear or anger or these so-called lower frequencies yeah just in the way you walk even if you're alone if it's with anger and, and fear and panic and um that's literally the vibration that's reverberating into the ether from your vessel and that is contributing to the collective fear that doesn't yeah. mean that you don't honor your fear and look at that and work to transmute or release or whatever you need to do it's a great like reminder it's not to neglect it but to yeah. stay in that and to move through the world in that way is your responsibility to the collective as it. much as as much as yourself so just to like elaborate on what you're saying because i yeah am, and am with you and and i i love all that yes i'm aligned and and you've enrolled me yes um no, i'm not <laughs> enrolling you that's why we're already friends um, um so uh inside of that so a solution my solution two things one you addressed which is acknowledge my feeling of jealousy acknowledge my feeling of of, of pain or of hurt of resentment so okay i acknowledge that what's underneath that which is my uh you know when i'm talking about generosity uh this need to protect that that is mine um defend myself in fairness uh this stems from my my brother always having you know, like having to fight for my fair share, right? That's where it comes from. Like that's one of the places. And so I can acknowledge not only the feeling and then I can acknowledge what's underneath that, why I feel that way. And then I get to shift into a, a, a way of being that is um, offering generosity, unconditional with no collateral, no, right? Or um, I can shift into a higher vibration of joy. We have that choice, right? So that's the solution. That's what I work, do when I when I'm in those places. I acknowledge it and then I shift my vibration, shift mm -hmm. my way. Yeah, yeah it's, it reminds me. I was watching the Ram Dass documentary the other night called "Becoming Nobody," which is already such a powerful title because instead of becoming somebody, which we're all trying to be somebody, it's actually about becoming nobody, which is like stripping the masks off into this kind of more authentic 
way of being. Mm -hmm. And in that, he says, don't get confused and think you have the right to be angry, which he got from his guru, right? Which was like, it's such a loaded statement. Because I, I can, I personally, as Jennifer, cannot be someone to ever tell anyone that they don't have the right to be angry. I would never do that, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone is entitled to their feelings One on a certain on a certain plane. But there's another plane where it's like, oh, that's ego. I have the mm-hmm. right, and it's like you could just let the anger come up and pass away. But this sort of righteous, you know, sense of like, I have the right then gives us permission to act on those feelings and acting on those feelings is where we get into trouble (laughs) you know and and we have the choice to act on those feelings in a way so anger can can cause i mean you can't tell me martin luther king wasn't angry you know at times and what he did the actions that he took with that anger were you know epic you know spreading love and and speech and like that's how he he took anger and and put it into something good. So certainly addressing, acknowledging our anger, those are human things. We just get to like, uh, you know, embrace it, acknowledge it, and then, you know, ship, agreed. Um, And also the uh, sentiment of backstory, like attaching to narrative, needing to know why. We're in this like pop psychology culture of, I need to go back into the trauma you know, and, and this was in the Ram Dass thing and it just resonated. Again, I haven't intellectualized it. It's not like something I would um, get into so much right now, but it was like, what if you just let it all go? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's like, really interesting. And now what do you do with that? Now, how do you shift your way of being into to, to shifting so that whatever caused you anger you don't get to be that you get to create something that's that's not that that's not in the same platform right the same um, it can be viewed as passion yeah it can be you know just um motivation yeah and generosity is like that if you're in generosity you're 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 not gonna be angry about it because you did that work for the good of something right Mm-hmm. And you did it out of generosity, not because you were expecting something in return. Generosity is giving unconditionally, without collateral, without you owe me, et cetera. And then when I feel like um, I'm keeping score or I did this, I did the dishes seven times, right? So somebody gets to do them now, right? No, I just get to do it an eighth time, you know? And, and it's just, and then suddenly somebody else comes back around and supports me in something else, right? So that's the ebb and flow of, of, of generosity. And then suddenly we're all living in abundance. But when I go, you owe me, it stops the movement, it stops the flow. Mm-hmm. And you're not paying attention to where you're supported in other arenas. So somebody's coming into giving me generosity while I'm giving someone else generosity. Mm-hmm. You know, and when we hoard, when we are takers and we hoard, then that constricts and restricts mm-hmm. the, the flow of generosity too. Um, oh, Tom Artivani's on. Uh, what's up, buddy? Um, speaking of horror films, I did Avenged with that guy. He's amazing. Hi, Tom. He's got a really great show um, too. What's the name of your show, Tom? Throw it up there. Um, and uh, he does it with Susan Toro. Um, you would love her. Oh, I should introduce you to them. She's great. Um, okay, so uh, that's beautiful. Um, are you complete on that one? Anything? You'd yeah, like to add? yeah. I mean, it's 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 a it's a spiral. So actually, you can keep going, but we don't have to. I mean, the next kind of layer of it is okay. Well, if you're if you're expressing generosity in order to get into the abundance flow, is that also looking for a result? You know, so we can leave it there in the sense of how do you purify your intentions? How do you really mm-hmm. purify your intentions? Is something to kind of raise as a question and we can, yeah. you know, move on because it's a great one. How, let's apply it. Let's put you on set for a second. So you're directing, producing, and you wrote. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and what are my tools for keeping like a harmonious set or? Yeah. Um, 
your way of being because if you're at that at the helm of that that ebb, that flows down right so mm -hmm. how do you encourage that harmonious set how do you encourage respect how do you encourage that um i mean for me vibe is the most important thing so sometimes it's group meditation a very strict rule of like not bringing any production office drama onto the set and my producers were super respectful like if somebody even started to to walk onto the set as if they were stressed out i asked them very nicely to just like please go out, consider the set like a vacation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the creative team would not, you know, feel that. And actually my producers ended up being so thrilled. They're like, yeah, when we need a vacation, we go to set now, like leave the production office, go to set. Stressful phone calls, everything else is like happening very, very, very far away. And um, just doing my best to be grounded and nice. Not to say that that's 100%, but if not, then there's definitely an apology. And I can honestly say that my sets are a lot of fun. Yeah. Even with I, all the hardship of all this back of the house stuff going on, they're magical. Because whether you're a production assistant, an actor, a caterer, producer, it doesn't matter. Everyone yeah. is totally a piece of the pie, totally respected. Um, and that takes, energy, it takes, it takes an army, you know? And, yeah. And that energy is woven into the fabric of the film. It's the alchemy. I call it the invisible alchemy. Alchemy. Yeah. You know, it's so people true. will watch, see the film and say like, we can see how much fun you guys were having. We can see how connected you were. And also rehearsals, which a lot of films don't do rehearsals, um, dinners, mm -hmm. hanging out deep conversations, weeks before shooting, vision yeah. boards, brainstorming, connecting, just as people. Yeah, I can't wait for us to create a project together and we get to generate that kind of artistic art and love and flow. And, and one other thing, the, the second part of that is um, as a leader receiving reviews and, and, and you know, direct and indirect feedback and criticism or a rejection. What that has given me, the gift of that, is that I can take feedback from anybody. I can take rejection from anybody. I can, I can be in a place of utilizing that experience as, uh, you know, that feedback as a result. So I get to shift my way of being to, you know, to promote another, mm -hmm. you know, a, another outcome, you know. So, uh, being a leader on set, uh, a, and a leader, one of my favorite descriptions or, or, uh, leadership distinctions is that, um, I get to be, uh, open to feedback in a way that's either verbal or this is working, this isn't working. And I get to not have an ego about it and move and shift so that people feel comfortable offering opinions and offering their creative input. And I, I love that process, that collaborate, collab, collaborative um, and contributive uh, philosophy on a set. And I think it's essential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary Pickford story. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and I just threw that up as a, we got to watch it. We got to see it. I want to see it the, the, the most updated version. When do we get to see that? We're working on it. Hopefully yeah. 20, 2020. Yeah. Yay. Okay. It's been cool. such a long journey. It's like, might as well finish strong, you know? <laughs> Don't sell that vision short, you know? To all the artists out there, honor your vision to the yeah. bitter end. Well, yeah. that kind of takes me into the next, uh, the and, next question. And people, really. honestly, it's not just specific to art. It's, you should honor your life vision um, regardless of how you spend your time or how you make your money or you should really do that. Right. Mm -hmm. That creativity. Um, quickly. So what do you do for yourself uh, to inspire um, inspiration, creativity, motivation, just give some quick, you know, to do's for yourself. Um, I am 
always inspired. <laughs> I have to calm down sometimes more the more more that direction. Um, but to get focus, which is probably more my challenge sometimes when I am so supercharged with inspiration. Um, and it works in all ways, you know, meditation is really a big, a big thing for me. Um, and also just being present in the moment as best as possible, like just honoring uh, each moment as its own life experience, trying yeah. to play with the psyche in days where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to think ahead. I'm not going to think behind. I'm going to do my best to be, or if I catch myself doing that, just use, whether it's like using the breath or using a song or whatever it is, like to really experience life fully, you actually do have to be present. Um, anxiety, life is happening out here. Anxiety and depression really come from being in the past and the future a lot of the time. So if I want to be in a creative flow, <laughs> I have to, remember presence is power because yeah. the, the the unfolding is in the moment the unfolding yeah. is just right now so uh my it, you know. my friend yeah. andres berientos uh was on here he was the um uh acting coach and translator on our set from race of the serpent oh uh, yay that's he's still on amazing. there if you're, yeah. if you're on there andres what's up buddy um, Hi, Andres. i should get you on here sometime you should jump onto our call at some point or maybe next time uh yeah. he's he's too a much technology right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're gonna master this uh andres is a a beautiful creature he's mm. he's passionate i mean he's colombian so you know he's just got that that uh thing about him he's he's creative he's he's an amazing human being mm. i i spent the better part of my two months in the amazon hanging out with him um uh the shaman that I love a lot that I've um, sat in ceremony with um, does her work in Colombia. I yeah. don't know exactly where, but it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, Colombia is a beautiful, beautiful country and the people are amazing. They're mm -hmm. incredible mm -hmm. people. We've talked about this a little bit, um, living in the past and we just kind of segued mm -hmm. into it. Um, you know, when we're living in our past, we get to admit like it, it doesn't serve us to avoid uh anything in the past we get to have clearing energy around any kind of resentment or or, or whatever we get to address it have an admittance around it because that empowers us right that's that's what makes us our unique um if we're in the maslow's pyramid and we're we look at human condition in that Maslow's pyramid we are all the same right our all of our needs are pretty much the same as we rise on that pyramid level um, however, uh, the, the thing that makes us different and unique is our past life or our, our past experience, right? And the thing that makes me different, uh, a different kind of artist is because of the experiences that I've had leading up to. And that's, and if we, dev we don't admit it or we don't bring that into our awareness, then we're, you know, we're, we're blocked, we're hiding something. Um, at least that's my experience. And that's kind of one of the things that I teach. Um, but, and when we're moving in our, moving forward and being present, like you said, which is great, um, life is happening in real time. It's happening outside of ourselves, right? Our minds only understand a perspective of the past, a perspective of the, a perspective of the past, a perspective of the future. And those aren't truths, right? Being in the present moment, life is happening in real time out here. I mean, we can get into the quantum multiple, it's not linear. And the only thing that is true is that present moment, yeah. right? We were talking earlier about um, being present, right? Okay, right. And we're, we can either be right about our story, right? Uh -huh. like, like I can either be right about the, or, or be victim to my story, okay. or I can be right about my vision. Right, I can be right about um, what when I. When you to say create. right, what do you mean? So, like when face, like you can be looking in one of those directions, or you can be right as in right or wrong. I don't. So, so I'm not, I'm not a fan about of 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 right and wrong. So let me yeah. just clarify okay. that. Right. So, so what I I prefer using. Okay, this is working and this isn't working. Right. So, if 
if I am held victimized mm-hmm. by my story, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? If I'm living in the past of I, this always happens to me, so I'm not going to risk being in a loving relationship or this mm-hmm. always happens to me. So I'm not going to risk doing another film. Right. right. Okay. So if you're victim of the past, uh-huh. right. And you're being right about that story. You right. know what I mean? You so mean like attached, right. you mean attached to it. Okay. Yes. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. And, and while I don't agree with the concepts of right and wrong, however, uh, being right about something Mm -hmm. is ego. Yeah. And it's a way of just like attaching to it and being certain that that is the way. Yeah. Yeah. And when we are quote unquote vision oriented and we are committed to being in that vision, right? Mm -hmm. I'm committed to creating this in the world. I'm committed to creating this project. I'm committed to being this person. Mm -hmm. Um, that is something that we can create. And yeah, it's the, the word right doesn't really work in that. However, the, the concept of I'm either going to be victim and in this story and be right about it, or mm-hmm. I'm going to be convinced and committed to this vision and be able to be flexible and renegotiate so that ultimately I get to that vision. Yeah. Basically, yeah. the way that I see it is that being, you know, in living in the future and living in the past, I see both as like very sticky um get yourself in trouble scenarios Mm -hmm. because if we're attached to the future we get anxious that we're not doing enough or how do we get there and we're still not being present so to um also agree to your point that having vision is vital to being motivated and inspired so what i believe in is like knowing your vision continuing to plant those seeds like set those intentions whether it's through meditation journaling conversation with friends in a lighthearted way, whatever it is for you that isn't stressful. Yeah. And then you let, and then you let it go. Totally. Let then it go. you just let it go. So then you're able to be in the present and you can then just commit to the moment and commit to the unfolding. And you don't need to be obsessing about what your vision is. You have to trust that it's there. It's been planted. The universe is like a garden. You plant seeds. And you don't stand over a garden and try to watch and obsess about the seeds growing, you'll kill them. You actually just visit them from time to time and water them here and there. But you have to trust that it's all been, it's all there. Your subconscious is doing the work. Everything is happening. So the best commitment to self is to actually be present. That doesn't mean I embody uh, anywhere near this as much as I would want to. That's a sentence that doesn't make sense, but you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This is what I know and I work on. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, you know, 2006, I was like, I'm going to be at the Oscars by 2015. And I had no way in hell, like there was no way that I I could ever have imagined how I was going to do that. I had a vision. I also had a vision of traveling the world. I had a vision of working with indigenous cultures. Right. And Mm -hmm. I trusted that. And then I just, what was that? Sage, it just smells it. so good. Yeah. And so I trusted that. And my way of, you know, being and being present and, and working hard and, and diving into scripts and diving into uh, material that would, you know, those were all mechanisms that were leading me in that direction. Right? Yeah. But it's like you're also like not, you're not working on those things in order to get to the Oscar. Right. You're working on those things because you genuinely want to be working on those things. Meanwhile, you've planted the seed that you would like to be in that position. And by committing yourself to the moment, really fully, you landed in that position. Yeah. Because if you don't commit to the present, you'll take a lot of windy roads to get places, which is so full of lessons and Mm -hmm. like incredible. But if you want a more direct path (laughs) and uh, expedited path in terms of working with the law of attraction, the, the present present is your best friend. Totally. I know it. I know it. Totally. I 100% agree with you. And, yeah. and being, you know, being in your vision and being, uh, a, being with integrity, being, uh, being powerful, being responsible, all of those things are ways of being that you, that will, will create and get you to that, that end result. Absolutely. We are in line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. So here's a fun question. So uh, 
You get to answer one of the three of these. Give it to me. Okay. Uh, answer one of the following, and I call this section uh, fucking actors, okay? Because okay. it's actually, you know, with the squiggly lines and so on. Hurry, I don't want to get cut off. Okay, We're okay. going to leave people right. in suspense. So what famous three questions that you can answer from? What famous actor have you slept with? Mm-hmm. What famous actor would you like to sleep with? Or what's the third one? Like what, what, what behaviors annoy me that industry professionals do? Yes. Okay. Um, this is lesson. I guess I don't like smoke and mirrors. So I don't like bullshit. Mm -hmm. I don't like, um, I shouldn't even say I don't like because it's not working. I Those actually, things don't work. That's a really good way. I to actually it. actually can see through it a lot, and it's kind of funny, but it's an interesting practice that has become part of the human, you know, collective. Uh, we all do to some degree, but our industry, I think, has it as like a heightened, or at least it feels that way mm-hmm. because it's such a there's a lot of like vanity and I just think it's a, it's like, um, blowing smoke, you know, pretending like there's excitement around something Mm -hmm. and there's really not. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Can't we just be real? (laughs) Um, And that applies again across the board, you know, but as we're sitting here in quarantine, I think a lot of us are kind of examining what authenticity means to us. So I'm not mad at anyone. I'm not hating on anyone. No. So I I think I'm going to rephrase that question to what do you feel like is, and you don't have to answer this because you just did, but what do you feel like is not working in the industry and what do you feel like is working in the industry? Um, And that's how I'm going to rephrase that question from now on. Um, And yeah, I mean, it's not about like getting mad. It's not about like any of that. It's just about like what's working. How can we move to improve it's just a waste of energy but it's such old programming and also um like gratuitous violence and you know telling stories that are not contributing to the elevation of humanity yeah um is something that i have like a fundamental issue with yeah so but that's okay because we're here to um improve on the content that we're putting out into the world all right yeah. Um, you mentioned authenticity. Uh, for mm-hmm. me, authenticity, and this is in acting, this is in life in general. Mm-hmm. Authenticity is when I'm vulnerable and I'm the inside of what I'm experiencing is matching the outside of, of what I'm showing, right? So if I'm in turmoil, I get to say, hey, you know what? I'm in turmoil right now. I'm admitting it. I get to address it and then I get to shift. And so it's reflective. Like it, the, the inside is matching the outside. That and uh, I'm I'm making a commitment to you to and I I feel like when we do this that we've begun to be sourced for it and we begin to uh, create it when we make a commitment. I'm committed to being generous in the world. I'm committed to to being a source for uh, love and abundance and and I get to shift from moment to moment to create that in the world. Uh, anything in line with that or anything that you want to say just to wrap us up today um thank you for opening up this conversation and um yeah it's great to set intention and i uh have a commitment to do the work on myself to continue to improve and operate with more and more integrity applying lessons that i've learned raising my vibration so I can be of service with the art I create or just the way I move through the world or in any other form or fashion. So I'm definitely um, setting the intention to continue the work. And yeah, I'm so grateful to have these conversations. I think by having having this conversation just already raises the vibration. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been fun to see people pop up. I like this Instagram live thing. It's really good too. We're going to master it. We're going to master it. We are, we are all masters of our own destiny. Um, So with that conclusion, 
Um, Jen, I, I, I love you so much. And I, when I think of you, I think of falling flowers in a bathtub. Ah, yay. And it's such a beautiful image. Um, so thank you for, for being the kind of person that when I think of you, I think of falling flowers in a bathtub. Oh, thank you. I think of you as the bathtub. That <laughs> <laughs> so I get to lay on and be like, thank you for holding me. Oh, uh, well, I can't wait to do that post-corona <laughs> fire pit uh, time. I know, I know. This was really good. Yeah. Person connection again. Um, I love you. I love you let's, too. Let's I'll call you now. Uh, I want to like, talk to a you little later. Quick. I'll let you know how this goes. I'm going to call you on the phone just real quick. On the cellular device. Yeah. All right.